Hello guys, this will be a uh, comprehensive tutorial on how to cool down your laptop CPU uh, using Throttle Stop, which is a free software you can download from techpowerup.com and you just scroll down here to Throttle Stop and download the latest version. And that's basically how you get it. Uh, this tutorial specifically will be uh, for a laptop. If you have a desktop, these options you see down here, which we will be using, will be a little bit different. Uh, but I kind of just want to show you what you can achieve using this tool and uh, yeah, why you should use it. So first of all, let me just uh, reset you know, all the voltages, so you can uh, see how this computer performs normally. So what I'm gonna do now, I'm gonna start up Cinebench, which is a benchmarking program for the CPU, which makes it use 100% of all its cores. And I just want to take a look at how high the temperatures get uh, using this. Let's just clear this so we can see the maximum temperature once it hits it. So let's just run this benchmark. Now this benchmark will run a bit slower because I'm recording at the same time. Uh, I can actually see it's uh, being much lower than usual. But as you can see, it's warming up pretty quickly. It's uh, already at 85 degrees and we should start to see some throttling very soon. Uh, it's the way of, it's a way the processor tries to keep itself safe by lowering its clocks to, you know, don't get too hot so that it, it kind of protects itself. Uh, and that's something we don't really want to see. I think this processor, yeah, there there it goes. Throttles down to 2.6 gigahertz. Uh, so this is what we don't want to see. We don't want to see throttling because that reduces performance. So what we're gonna do once this benchmark finishes, um, we're gonna go into the tech power up tools uh, specifically the um, the internal clock generator of or voltage controller I think it is for this machine uh, and we're gonna we're gonna play around a bit so as you can see we got a score of 602 this run so let's see if we can improve that now what you normally would do you would go into CPU and uh, CPU core and CPU cache and click on adjust uh, unlock adjustable voltage uh, as you can see, I've already found a sweet spot. Oh, it actually didn't save in the CPU voltage. That's strange. Oh, well, let's just uh, set this to zero. So normally, your uh, your menu would look like this uh, with everything at zero. Now, you just want to turn on adaptive, uh, unlock adjustable voltage in the CPU core, and then you want to go down here and uh, go with about 25 at a time, maybe 30, you know, whatever feels best, and click apply. And do the exact same number with the CPU cache. Um, and then you want to stress test the CPU, so you want to run Cinebench again. Um, uh, maybe a couple of times, just to see if it's stable or not. Uh, and after you've done that, and you see the temperatures, uh, you want to reduce it by another 50, see if it doesn't crash. If it crashes, well, then increase the voltage again. And just keep doing this until you find a, a comfortable uh, voltage. So I'm just going to reduce it by the amount I know my computer is capable of, which is somewhere around 151. And there we go. And now let's just uh, take a look at the uh, top temperatures. So in the last run, we got 90 on the hottest core. Let's just clear this and see what it gets to now. So let's run the benchmark. Um, after this, I am going to show you guys how you can uh, reduce the temperature of your iGPU as well. Because that's something you want to do if you have a discrete graphics card. Uh, you don't want the iGPU using too much power. So as you can see, it doesn't rise quite as quickly. It stays at around 75. I think it will get up to around 79 by the end of this run. Uh, but I guess we'll see about that. Ah, 
and another thing you can take notice of is that these the um, the uh, clock isn't declining because the temperatures are kept under under control, uh, so there isn't any throttling, which is a good thing. All right, so it actually reached uh, 80 degrees, uh, so it it was a bit hotter than thought, but you know it's fine, and our score increased because the uh, the clock was kept at a you know optimal uh, level. Another thing you should do uh, when you're in here is that uh, you should go back into the FI VR and you should go to Intel GPU and you should also decrease this clock because the iGPU has a kind of stable point as well. Uh, you should only do this though if you have a discrete graphics card as well. Um, simply because uh, Often in laptops, uh, especially the graphics card, this, the discrete graf graphics card itself is not connected directly to the monitor. It goes through the iGPU, so the iGPU is always activated, uh, which is not a good thing. <laughs> you don't want that. Uh, well, you can't do anything about it, but uh, what you don't want is the iGPU creating heat. It shouldn't be because that will in turn heat up the processor and since most laptops share the same heatsink for the GPU and the processor, heating up the processor also means heating up the GPU, which becomes kind of a negative spiral. So I found my stable iGPU at minus 141 voltage, um, uh, millivolt I mean. Now this may vary differently for you. Uh, and I don't I actually have a very good way of testing it. I guess you just have to see how stable your system is uh, and make sure that you're running your discrete GPU in 3D and 2D graphic intensive tasks. But other than that, uh, I don't think there's really much more to say. Uh, actually, yes, this specific CPU is the Intel i7-6700HQ, which is a good processor, but if you have a 4720HQ, I think it is, a Generation 4 mobile chip, you can actually uh, set the, uh, the turbo limit. So normally in, in a 4720HQ, I think the maximum turbo of one core active is 3.3 gigahertz and then it goes down to 3 or 2.9 with all four cores active but with this program it doesn't work with the 6700 hq but it works with the with the fourth fourth generation you can set four cores to be the same turbo boost as one core uh, which is amazing uh, so that's something you may want to play around with. But um, yeah, basically this is the tutorial. Uh, I like this program because it gives you uh, control all the way down to like, I think it increases and decreases by 0 0.95 millivolts at a time, which is perfect for me because I'm a fiddler. I want to find like the minimal amount uh, necessary. Another program you can use that I've already shown on this channel is Intel Extreme Tuner. But that only gives you control uh, by 5 millivolts at a time, which is not specific enough for me because I need the specifics.